yeah. Just want to give a little extra juice. <laughs> Start crashing your guitar. You're like, ah, I would love that. I'm gonna buy a guitar just for that. Just to, just remember, to smash it. Remember when we did that? We did uh, we did that uh, pilot that I the prank pilot. That yes, was, that was so funny. You bought a guitar that you could break in half, and it was so. <laughs> yeah, really- I bought like a fifty dollar Craigslist yeah. guitar. And he was doing love songs in the park. Like you could pay a dollar for a love song. And yeah. So he starts playing a love song. Like people are around too, like in Central Park. And all of a sudden he just starts going in, this bitch, I hate her. And he starts looking <laughs> out. <laughs> just starts breaking the guitar. Starts smashing it. it. You could only do it once. It was a one take thing. One take. Yeah. We had, I think, two cameras just to make and sure we got the coverage. And one guitar. That's the name of your new album. <laughs> but uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was hilarious, actually. I thought, I thought that was funny. They didn't pick it up, but hey. No, we but we had fun. I think it was Zach. We had Zach uh, McGovern as a host. <laughs> That's never a good idea. I blame him for most I things. Do. I blame him for <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> oh. Okay, everybody. Getting in trouble, that's what I do. Um, <laughs> good to see everybody. I get I can't really see you, but good to feel you, I guess. Well, f- yeah, feel it in your heart. There's, there's a few out there in our hearts. Anthony knows. Got his pink shirt. It's uh yeah, it's it's, it's gonna be that kind of show. <laughs> um a lot of stuff going on. Um I, I mentioned in the in the beginning we were all talking before the show started, you know, the R. Kelly, you know, that's that uh, I'll just open with it. You got 30 years, dude. It's just like unbelievable. And people still listen to Michael Jackson. You got 30 years? Yeah, 30 years. People still listen to Michael Jackson like it's nothing. Like, I I, I turn on Michael Jackson, like, no care in the world. But I wonder if people are going to treat R. Kelly that way. You know what I mean? And he never did prison time, obviously. He kind of was in his own prison, Michael Jackson. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. kind of crazy. It's like, I wonder, you know. you know, Because people, like, separate, you know, the artists sometimes. As oh, as they don't. yeah. I think people are not. I think people did it with Michael Jackson because his stuff was so classic. But I don't think people are doing that really with R. Kelly's well, stuff Well, you've so never much. been down in the dumps and about to have an audition. And, uh, you know, I believe I can fly. Comes on and, uh, don't you tell me that's not inspirational. That song will get you going. Yeah. That comes on forget it dude i'm out i'm done i'm just i do anything i do i take on any dude i could do any, 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 any. i i never i never got into his stuff so that is you know i believe i can fly it's definitely not my <laughs> inspirational <laughs> jam but no i'm not into it either i'm not into half the stuff you know that that is popular but i get into certain mo- certain parts of it you know what i mean mm-hmm. like even today there's like a an album we're covering it's just like i, I can get into it if i if i f- kind of lose myself because I, I think you got to lose yourself when it comes to certain in the things. moment yeah and you own it there you go <laughs> you Mom's better never let Mom's <laughs> spaghetti. i like it I like what you're doing there buddy you're using those comic skills i like it <laughs> Somebody needs to be on this show. I keep scary the whole thing. <laughs> Somebody to throw one in there. Oh my God. Yeah, we're some real jokes. music people. We're talking about music. Like we this to... guitar is not even real. I know. It comes not. right off. <laughs> comes right off. Anyway, so yeah, just don't pee on girls and you'll probably uh, stay out of jail and uh, yeah. you get some other stuff too. So anyway. Did that happen today? The this uh, the verdict? That's why I weirdly Oh man. Fired. Yeah. Um yeah, that's that. So well, how you been, man? You good? What have you been doing? Anything crazy? How's the band going? How's uh, band die, just... how's die laughing? Die what? laughing, die yeah. Laughing. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh we got some LA shows coming up in a few oh, weeks. That's so funny. Shit. Oh shit. So funny. You guys need we'll I'll, I'll bring you guys up. Maybe we're yeah. gonna be at the uh, the Redwood, which I I heard is a good, a good uh, venue. Yeah, Redwood. That's um, cool. So we have rehearsal later tonight. We've been rehearsing on Wednesday nights. Um, How's the vibe? You guys clicking? I know it's tough in the beginning, right, with a new band. Yeah, it's one of the dudes. I I, I uh, it's funny. I met one of the dudes on on Twitter. Mm-hmm. We were both replying to Eve Six tweets, and we realized that we both make music and. Uh, yeah. So it we started. Been, Twitter's not bad. It could have been Grinder. You know what I mean? It yeah, yeah. That was. <laughs> <laughs> but we started like emailing each other tracks, playing on each other's songs, and and just like throwing ideas around and stuff. And uh, so then when I was when I knew I was going to move here, he was getting rid of his his. Uh, he was forming the band, but it wasn't fully formed. So he was rehearsing with the drummer. The drummer wasn't good. And I was like, 
and uh, maybe he won't because he wanted me to play rhythm guitar. I played some guitar solos and some of the recordings and stuff. And I was like, I think you need me on drums because nice. this drummer sucks. Nice. And so, well, it's interesting that, you know, that that's probably a, a new way of bands finding each other, you know, it's like through the internet, you know, online, yeah. like videos and things, because it used to just be, you know, the bulletin board at Guitar Center, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking for a bass player that doesn't yeah. look his mom, you know, that was, <laughs> you know, that was basically... You know, you just get a phone number. You call them up, yeah. yeah. Or you hear somebody that's like doing the, doing that at the like sitting at the uh, amp trying out the guitars. Or there was one guy playing Stairway to Heaven and nobody ever <laughs> that guy. That is, that is the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just don't. Don't, don't yeah don't act like you can play that but, <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine you see this you can, you <laughs> i can play parts of it yeah i think every guitar is probably that's in the wheelhouse it's you like, gotta you gotta know some of it yeah. uh but yeah so that's that's uh that's what i've been up to how, how you been you've been on the road a little bit i've been on the road we just got back we were, it was a short one it was uh we did san robles um California. It's a beautiful wine country out there. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we all did our first amphitheater. So that was really cool to be outside. And to be honest with you, the other one that I've done is the uh, <laughs> Comedy Under the Stars with Jeff. Oh, with Jeff. <laughs> I did that one too. That's a fun one. This is a kind of a giant version of that. But to be honest with you, I'll, I'll talk to Jeff about it. But it was, uh, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to do comedy, you know, outside. But I think a lot of the pandemic stuff, we were all kind of doing comedy outside in parks. Oh yeah. Parks. parks. So even with of, no mic. Yeah. I, I had a horrible gig one time. I opened for a band, pretty big country band called Lone Star. And it was, um, it was like on a base in Jersey, uh, uh, army base or something. And it was like, you know, they said, Oh yeah, just be, you know, PG 13, whatever. And then I get up there and it's like children, you know, it, with the parents, <laughs> like young toddlers and stuff. And, and, you know, and at that time I didn't really work clean at all, especially if you didn't pay me very well. So I was just like, I ah, just, I'm sorry guys. You just have to tell your kids what these things mean. And, I, <laughs> and then there was like a chaplain and then the chaplain comes up. He's like, yeah, you need to. And I go, dude, why are you even here? Why are you at the concert? Nobody wants their chaplain at the concert. <laughs> so it's just like this whole thing, but, uh, but we did good. We did great. And then we went to one of my favorite places, uh, uh, Reno, Nevada. We drove uh, from California to Reno. And uh, I used to play this um, Catch a Rising Star in Reno in the Legacy Casino. Okay. It was really cool to, you know, be with all, all these guys with Becky Owen and you know, Vicky and Nate, obviously. And then we uh, played the ballroom, like 3,000 people. So it was quite, wow. a, quite a jump from 22 people on a Thursday night at the Catch a Rising Star <laughs> to wow. this, like, phenomenal, you know, audience of people and stuff. So it was good. But very blessed and fun. And uh, we had a good time. And so, you know, we all know each other from New York. So it's like, yeah. it feels like the Village Lantern on wheels. Yes. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned the Village Lantern is a place where I did uh, like a brunch show for parents and their young kids oh, like wow. what you were talking about like young kid they weren't paying attention they had no way of connecting with the weird like my jokes about plants or whatever yeah. like so children funny. shouldn't go to you know comedy shows i think i think music is the first thing you should introduce to childhood so, you know just yeah because they don't have to know what the songs yeah. are about they can still yeah. they're like dancing yeah. clapping they don't know i used to do uh camp shows drunk those were fun <laughs> and uh one time i was at gotham comedy club and the owner of the club i was like in the middle of my joke and he just he walks up the owner of the club chris Mazzilli, and he just grabs my beer <laughs> out of my hand wow <laughs> it's like in mid joke i'm like okay and then i just go back in <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Guys. 14 years yeah. sober, guys. 14 years sober. All right. <laughs> uh, do you have any uh, do you have any rules today? Oh, um, yeah, way to be on top of it. Anyway, I, I didn't it. have one ready, but I, I have a box of records. Uh, I just did random pulls up kind of in the theme of kind of where we're going today, which uh, it's still uh, African American Music Appreciation Month, the month of June. And uh, these, these uh, albums here, you know, is uh, jazz singers of of just the next level this is uh dinah washington who inspired oh, yeah. uh like billy holiday and you know so many others and uh yeah this is one of those kind of dollar bin things you know i got like a thrift thing or something and just like i didn't know anything about it really and uh and then i just listened i was like oh shit this is where a lot of it comes from so this is a great album uh i think this was live in dc it's a really cool album uh in tribute really some stuff on there all right nice let's see 
And then this one's really cool. I'm mean, well known, big Nina Simone. Yes. And, and this is with Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Reed, who's, uh, I guess, a big deal in the jazz music community. And this is a really, this is a live album as well. Trouble in Your Mind, Nobody, Cry Before I Go. This is really cool. Funky, Funky Soul, which is a really cool song. Can't, I mean, it would that be terrible if it just wasn't a good song? Be like, he calls song called Funky, Funky, funky Soul. Funky, Funky Soul. Like, eh, it's okay. It's, <laughs> it's fine. Okay. It's okay. It doesn't really, it doesn't have a lot of funk in it. But, uh, but this is cool. This is one of those weird ones, you know, it's like once in a while you'll find albums that are just rare. And, you know, I don't know if this is even legal. You know, a lot of times I'll find oh, it. Yeah. Like, There's no way they got to, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's not in the Nina Simone uh, you know, estate. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's but, not part but, of the uh, discography, official yeah. discography. Might be. I mean, there's a lot of Jimi Hendrix like that. I think I had one on the show that I covered, and, it, and the debate was if it's even him. You know? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. It was just like, this guy, nah, some dude's just pretending to be Jimmy on that. <laughs> 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 That's the thing. All right, let's bring in the riffraff. Let's bring him in. Play the riff. Play the riff. Play the riff. Play the riff. <laughs> What's up, Jeff? You still doing that comedy under the stars? I was going to put in for that. No, no uh, funding this year. The, uh, the township uh, really took it on the chin during COVID. Damn township. Yeah, we're <laughs> trying to get uh, some type of funding to maybe do half the season. Just do a GoFundMe, man. <laughs> do it. <laughs> you do. Just make people on the internet for money. That's how it yeah. works. Speaking of which, you can send that. money to us. <laughs> you had a fire or something. We'll give you some. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> It was a, it was such a fun show when I when I did it. Yeah, that yeah. was man. But um, you know, listen, it's free me up. I have a, a really busy uh, month coming up here. So, mm-hmm. yeah, when one door closes, right. another one opens. It must be nice. <laughs> I'm sitting around <laughs> in L.A. <laughs> doing Andy's nothing. Feeding the cat. <laughs> Adam Holtz. Adam's doing all kinds of high end work for TikTok and yep. you know Anthony's doing this show. And, uh, <laughs> broke shit. You're crushing Comedy Hub, though. You're on every channel, I think. Oh, yeah, every yeah. show they have on Comedy Hub, because we know that pays the big bucks. If you only watch Comedy Hub, it looks like I'm killing it. <laughs> but then if you go outside, you're like, wait a minute. You know what? There's going to be somebody who wishes they were you. Not really. <laughs> I'm trying to make him feel good, Dustin. Stop. You're riding around in, Have in you planes. Have watched America's Got Talent this season? Jay's at the vet. He can't really do all the stuff he can do. He can't, like, mute us. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the car right now. Like, this is, I think this is, a, like, there's nobody in charge right now. Or unsupervised. Yeah. It's unsupervised. It's like a breakfast club. Um, funny stuff. Great stuff. Uh, yeah. So, uh, let's get into it, man. So, um, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting collection today. Wow. Talk about a ton of bugger all over the place with the albums we chose today. I think that was pretty cool. Um, cause I think uh, Dustin, did everybody follow the rules? Yeah. Uh, are you uh-huh. questioning mine? Uh, I black. am. She's black. She is? Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. She's black. Yeah, I, she's very light skinned, but she's black. She, uh, she's part of the Afro punk movement and stuff. We can open with that. We'll open with Anthony. Yeah. We can talk about right. it. I'd say her father was Scottish, like a white Scottish guy. So she's, you know, but she's black. Yeah, she's black. The Afro punk. All right, get into it, Anthony. Show me. Okay. Show me I, black so, <laughs> uh, all right. So I, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, I, I wanted to pick something a little different from what you guys already picked. Uh, your albums, and uh, I want to do something that was a little different. And I think that uh, a lot of black artists in general get overlooked uh, when you talk about the punk movement, and women get overlooked. Uh, so black women really get overlooked uh, in uh, the discussion of uh, the history of punk rock. So uh, I picked um, X-Ray Specs and their their album uh, Germ Free Adolescence. Um, which came out, what was that, 77, I think? 78. 78. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I couldn't really, I couldn't find a ton of information about the the making of, of the album, but I, uh, I, I like it. I think that you can hear the influence that they had, uh, you know, in later bands like Bikini Kill and, and, and stuff like that. They were pretty ahead of their time. Um, 
and the singer, um, what's her name? Polly Styrene, I think, uh, uh, is a, uh, you know, uh, black, uh, woman. And, uh, so they were, I think she was influenced, uh, after seeing uh, the Sex Pistols live, she wanted to start a band, mm-hmm. and so uh, so the X-ray Specs were formed. And I, I'm I'm pretty sure they were starting to get some some traction pretty quickly after they like they were playing all the big all the big uh, venues with some some pretty big punk bands uh, pretty much immediately. And uh, this is their I think they only have this one album like the Sex Pistols, mm-hmm. um, and they only lasted a couple of years. You know, I think by '79 they they were not, no longer a band, but uh, I I like it. It's I think that it's uh, it's it's punk rock, but it's not only punk rock, and it incorporates. You know, it's cool that they have like a saxophone player, and it's a it's a pretty uh, they have a pretty strange sound, and and I I I like it. So, and it's different than everything else that you guys picked. So, um, it's not that different actually. There's a lot of um you know, similarities to some of the music, but I do like this band a lot. Um, I think this is a great album. I think I love how you usually pick uh, bands that have one album and they're done. (laughs) 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 They get one shot and it's done. Um, This is a really cool band. Um, I'd heard about them, but I hadn't really gone into listening to them too much. Um, you know, there's a lot going on uh, as far as influences, you know, uh, the Slits, the Adverts, Slits, Slits, yeah. James, Susie and the Banshees, you know, and I even hear like some Patsy Klein in there. Like she mm-hmm. turns it out sometimes. And, um, you know, and the saxophone is an interesting choice. You know, um, I think, uh, you know, the Stooges were able to kind of put the, the saxophone in there, the Flippers and the Stranglers, you know, or kind of bands, the punk bands that were able to kind of pull off the sax and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's, it, it kind of, it, it, adds to it a little more because sometimes punk gets you know kind of flat where it's just like it's rage it's guitar it's you know and then the sax kind of gives it a richer sound so I, yeah yeah i'm amazed that this band didn't pop and I, I feel like you know if they had stayed a little longer the 80s would embrace them i think and, so yeah because yeah. in the banshee bands like you know they, mm-hmm. they could have added some more modern sounds to maybe what they were doing is kind of you know but uh yeah it's cool man i uh, loved all the songs really uh germ free adolescence the opening track was great kind of drew me in and uh you know an identity is such a pistols vibe you know that's yes something. you know very pistols yeah and uh you know the day the world turns got some good sax on there uh genetic engineering has a lot of sax I thought that was great. But, uh, you know, one of the songs I like, I'm a poser. You know, that was a big deal when I was in high school. You know, it was yeah. like, punk are you? You yeah, know, yeah. a lot of us were called posers or not. You know, you had to prove your punk. And it's like, you know, you're like, that's why I put like a safety pin in my kneecap. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, Top it's, this. It's like when things like were matter to you, you know, when you're just like this, your brain's forming. You think that you got to do shit like that to be cool, you know. But uh, so, yeah, but, you know, punk punk rock was always something that, you know, kind of like took me out of Texas a little bit and was able to have this kind of identity with a few people. But uh, yeah, this band's great, man. I thought, uh, you know, it's kind of like if, like a Susie and the Banshees, if they had just straight guitars and drums and stuff, mm-hmm. but, you know, a little more. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I like a lot. I thought they, you know, have a good sound. I would like to listen to this. I, I'd buy this album. I think this would be yeah. a good one on vinyl. I think it would be something I would listen to a lot and uh, it's upbeat, you know, that's the thing, but it's not, but it's not like some of the picks you've had, you know, it's upbeat, but it's like a little, you know, you know, abrasive where this isn't embrace. Uh, it wasn't that abrasive and probably has a lot to do with Chiz got a great voice. And yeah. So that makes a difference in punk. You don't hear that a lot. I think punk punk music in general, the voice is always not the best part of the band. And so right, I think yeah. she's like very talented. So yeah, I liked it. It was a really good pick. I liked it. Thanks, uh, yeah. Adam, how'd you feel about this? So I uh, I went into this knowing absolutely nothing about X-ray specs. I I I, uh, I don't think I've ever even heard of them before, and huh. um, I I really enjoyed it. I, I thought this is um, a great uh, art punk kind of album. Um, I feel like it's something you would hear spinning at the record store, like one of those. Just as you're going through vinyl, you're like, oh, what's what's that? I mean, it's and, and it would sound kind of modern too. Um, I was even thinking this this band could have been a band that could have opened for Blondie. Nice. Yeah. But yeah. um but yeah, I mean I think this is this is um it's really interesting. I definitely wanted to check out more about this band. But uh was this a UK band? 
Yeah, yeah London, I think. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really good. Just uh, London is always putting out the good stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, how would you feel about this black uh, woman uh, as a front well, person that you're debating? <laughs> well, I didn't. But again, I had heard of X-ray specs. I never really gave him a listen. I remember. I remember, like in the '70s, and there was some type of. I thought there was at one time, like a you know, where they came back at some point. Where you know, where they, they I don't know if they opened for somebody, but you know, I mean, they've been off the radar for years, yeah. uh, as far as I was concerned. So when um, and also, Anthony got the the, uh, the album in late, um, so I thought maybe he kind of <laughs> rushed. But it was, it, it got it in less than forty eight hours before the show. I that's that's terrible. I got that's oh terrible. my god! Come but on. I, but I, I got a chance to listen. Okay, so I'm, so I'm listening to it, and I liked it. I liked it, and I'm like, but is she black? She, I mean, it, I didn't, I didn't know. And then I looked at a picture. And I was like, oh, I don't think she's black. But I mean, when I was listening to it and it was, I was listening to it in the car, it was good driving music. And I, so I always jot down and I'm thinking Joan Jett, the Go-Go's oh, yeah, definitely, okay. mm-hmm. definitely mm-hmm. you hear Sex Pistols. Mm-hmm. And then I listened to it like a, a, a second time. Um, and I'm thinking, you know what? Joan Jett should have wrote these songs because I, I just recently saw Joan Jett on Friday night at the, during the, um, the stadium tour. And, and most of a set is covers. I mean, oh. you know, it's like, yeah, I, these guys were, you know, I don't know. Like I, I liked like artificial. I thought it was good. Obsessed with you warrior in Woolworth. I thought these were like cool, like punky songs. And like Adam is right. They do kind of sound like, uh, uh, um, a little bit more modern than, than, than a seventies, you know, uh, sound like, you know, you can play this today mm-hmm. and I think it would be relevant. And I liked, and I do like the idea of walking in a record store and playing. Cause that, remember that Dustin, you probably would know this more than any of the other two guys, but remember like you would go into record stores and you know, you could spend hours there and just like you would hear stuff you never heard before. And you may even buy something that you never uh, even considered buying That's when you walked nice. in that day. It still happens at record stores yep. across America, man. You, uh, yeah, but there's not that many record stores anymore no, across no, America. But that's the point of this show. Keep it alive. Right. You know? but, but, but remember, like, when there was all the time, like, like the best one, Bleak of Bob's, we would go in there all yeah. the time, and you would get, like, the... Um, uh, you know the, the 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 bootlegs and you know and you get the, the stuff on tape you know it was you know it was really really cool but that, that's what this brought me back to it brought me back to that era which is such a great era of uh music i love the late uh 70s early 80s but yeah th- this was this was a great great pick man like again i'm gl- again, one of the reasons why i'm glad i do the show is i get a chance to you know i would have never i would have never sought this band out on my own and listening to it, it was it was pretty cool identity was another song that, that uh, like that was pretty good that's why anthony's on the show just, just, uh, <laughs> otherwise it'd just be the same same top 100 but um yeah it's like well but i actually my pick today um i i was listening um it was it was playing when i was you know walking in a record store so it's like oh I, yeah yeah, you have to kind of like, you know, I, I enjoy that. You know, you pay attention to the whole, you know, just whatever's playing in the record store. I think that's a, that's oh, a yeah. good thing. But uh, yeah, this is a good band. And um, it's like, thanks, Anthony, for bringing them to light. Maybe they'll have a reunion or they're all dead. Who knows? Um, the singer's dead. Uh, oh, she wow. was 20, she 2011, died? she died. Huh? How'd she die? Uh, she had breast cancer. Oh, oh, so oh that sucks. That does suck. Oh man, I, I don't know where my But album. they they did a couple of reunions leading up to I think maybe in the nineties and then in the two thousands. Uh they did they did some stuff. Mm. Oh interesting. Uh very And cool. there's a documentary about the uh, about the band too. Here we go again, Anthony. Another Can documentary. One of those documentaries. Stop giving us work, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, but I, I I I'm interested to to check it out. Yeah, it should be cool. I don't know where my album. I, it's so funny. I brought my album, but then it's like somewhere in the lost of my apartment. <laughs> All right. So, um, we'll go to Jeff's. We'll go to Jeff's pick, which is a little opposite of, of Anthony's pick, but that's what a I'm little sure. bit. Yeah, I went with um, the nineteen. Oh, same same era, nineteen seventy nine. So, th- so these two could have been. Uh, you know, could. They, they could have passed each other. You could have got, listened to a radio station and somehow this would have been played. But I picked the 1979 
uh, Donna Summer uh, album, Bad Girls. It was her seventh studio album. Wow. Um, this was, yeah, this was a monster album, by the way. Um, six weeks at number one, uh, four top uh, 10 singles. Um, it, it, it went uh, double platinum. I mean, so this was a really successful album for her. Um, just a little background about Donna Summer, because it, it ties into the album. Uh, she started as a session vocalist uh, in Germany. And that's where she met jo Giorgio Moroda, who uh, becomes her her producer. And, you know, he, you may know him from Midnight Express um, uh, soundtrack. And he was very, very influential in the 70s and 80s, you know, uh, with uh, you know do, doing uh, beds on movies. Uh, but he produced the album. And uh, the first app song that they really collaborated on was Love to Love You, Baby, which is, you know, kind of like a, a disco and and and, and music uh, classic. Um, but on this album, they also brought in some big time writers. They brought in Bob Conti. They brought in Harold Faltermeyer. You guys may know Harold Faltermeyer. He did the, the music for um, uh, what, the trade, not trading place. What's the Eddie, Eddie Murphy movie in California? Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, he did the, the he did the music for Beverly Hills Cop. Um, and the this theme? album, he, yeah, he he did. Oh, nice. That's a great one. He, that, that's Harold Fulton. So he was he was he's a great musician, great producer, and also but also a big songwriter. So they they had brought in a team of songwriters for this album, and this album didn't disappoint. It was a commercial success. It was a critical success. Uh, this album was released in seventy nine. So in nineteen eighty, she winds up winning. Uh, the Grammy for best for best female rock for best female rock vocal on Hot Stuff, and it was the first time. But it was the first time they had had that category in the Grammys. So I thought that, and she beat out people like Bonnie Raitt and uh, other people of, of that time. But yeah, she winds up winning for for um, for Hot Stuff. Um, Bad Girls, the the song itself was on insane rotation in a big time radio station in new york called wktu it was the oh, big yeah. yeah the big Jeez. disco station so this album had elements of rock it had elements of disco it, um and the thing is with donna summer when you listen to her voice i mean she could sing rock she can sing disco she could sing gospel she was whitney houston before whitney houston um and this album i think really kind of exemplifies just, you know, just her range in, in, in songs on it. You know, the, the hits, you know, hot stuff, bad girls, dim all the lights. But then there, are, I think there are other songs that are also uh, very good too. Like uh, journey to the center of your heart uh, is, is a very underrated song. Uh, Walk away um, on our own, uh, our love, love will always find you. These, she, these are just great, great vocal performances. And um I don't know. I was always I was always a fan of it. The thing is with this album, the only the only kind of like caveat about it that I, I don't like is I think there's a lot of songs on it. There are 15 songs on it, and all of them are, like, are not killers. Like if she if she had cut this album down to 10, 12 songs, I think this would have been a tighter album. But overall, this this is just a great, great album by Dada Summer. Yeah, um, it is a good album. I still I feel it's trapped in a time capsule. You know, that's the only uh, thing that I would say about this album. Um, I have a very hard time listening to this album and not putting uh, my high socks on and roller skating. <laughs> in its beach. <laughs> like, I mean, it is so dated. I mean, I, I remember as a child, this, uh, I had a little, I think I had a little Donna Summers 45. And, and so... I, I it's I think you're gonna say crush great good feel music, but it's I mean, am I gonna crank up some Donna Summer? Probably not. Am I maybe if I get kitschy and because I used to, I did that one time, I had went through a phase of disco and you know, ABBA and stuff. So it would have to be something where I get in that groove and I'm just being silly. But I feel like nobody's really jamming out to Donna Summer unless you're at a wedding, you know. I feel like <laughs> school dance. Music, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> And I love how you brought up her Grammys. And last week you said the Grammys don't matter. But anyway, <laughs> if we're gonna, if we're gonna, oh, they oh, don't matter. Oh, but if hello. you're gonna, but if you're gonna talk about accomplishments and and what she did, yeah, you know, that that's something. And also, first, and it just goes to show how stupid the Grammys are. They give you know that for rock performance. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think there's a just what calls a heavy metal band. Yeah, we know. Sure. I mean, there's a you know, I think it's a, <laughs> the it's a little fused between what pop is and what rock is, you know. But uh, but they would probably play her on a more kind of a rock pop station, so maybe that's what it is. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's it's fun. It's fun music, and she's very talented. I wish that you know, I wish Donna Summer would have gone unplugged. I wish, like, you know, that someone would have put, a, you know, a, a trio behind her and, mm-hmm. you know, really let her sing in a way that is wasn't so techno disco And, you know, because those those hooks and all that stuff, it's fun. But I feel like it's just it's of that. It's what ruined. You know, that's why disco had such a, you know, people that's got the Giorgio that Moroder sound. influence, yep. Dustin. Yeah. yeah. It, it, people got sick of that sound you know that's why it just you know it just phased out so it's unfortunate sometimes because you see you know somebody who's a very talented singer and trapped in that the Bee Gees got trapped in it like they just get trapped in this certain kind of beats and stuff and i don't know it's hard to listen to like you know younger people i don't think are gonna feel this the way you know you have a little bit of nostalgia with it i do too but i feel like you know i feel it's something that happened year i mean i was i was a child when i would listen to any of this but now and listen Listening to it, it brought me back to a little bit of that. But I had a hard time listening to it. I had to skip songs. Like I couldn't do a whole song sometimes. Like I felt like it was, it was just too like you know, Rite Aid music. You know, I just couldn't. I couldn't feel the the seriousness of the music, even though she's very talented. I don't know if anybody felt that way, but that's just kind of how I felt. But I think she's you know extraordinarily talented. But it was just very very dated to me like sometimes like anthony's you know the album like you know like we said they could be now you know this is very 70s this is, has 70s all over it so that was the only thing is that i could i couldn't get out of that i couldn't get out of that 70s thing i felt like it was hard to enjoy it uh adam what'd you think but old donna summer so um I was listening to this on a red eye flight yesterday and I just kept thinking, man, I hope, uh, I hope I don't zonk out. My AirPods go out and, and hot stuff or bad girls is blasting throughout the airplane. <laughs> but, <laughs> bad girls. <laughs> the whistles. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beep, beep. But I, uh, I actually, I, I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I was. Um, and, uh, Unlike you, Dustin, I kind of liked the Georgie uh, Mordor uh, sound on this. I think it's, um, uh, oh, and you know what? Uh, he's also, um, the way I know him is from Daft Punk. Um, mm. But, yes, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think there's, um, I have a, a soft spot for disco, even though it's such a malign genre. Um, and I don't know, there's just, um, I liked how the songs were continuous They're you know, each one kind of bled into the other one. Um, but I, I mean, I don't think it's an album I'm going to play often, but I, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy driving around to it too. Yeah. In a halter top, maybe. Um, right. <laughs> Hold the top of the training bra, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I want to see Jeff dance to some Donna summer. We're going to have a, oh, yeah. us in, right. <laughs> see if Anthony would have invited us to his wedding, I would have taken over the dance there floor. Was no wedding. <laughs> we was didn't do it. Yeah. That's we just it. went to the, yeah, we, we didn't do wedding. anything with we, anybody I else. I'm one of his closest friends. I wasn't there. It was at the freaking courthouse. Yeah, yeah. I would have made the, I would have made the trip to California. I would have come just, out, I would have brought my, would have brought my special shoes. It's right. more depressing than being the guest at the courthouse wedding. Right. <laughs> and, and dancing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wherever like a boom box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dancing in the parking lot. Just uh, my own, on the cardboard, my Adidas, you know, right. <laughs> blue, blue, blue tuxedo. Yeah. 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 So, you know, but uh, Anthony, uh, this does not seem like your jam. So I'm very curious. You You know, it's not, but it's fun. You know, I, I, and I sort of feel like, like you and, and Adam, like somewhere in between, I I don't mind so much that it's as dated as it is because it's, to me, it's, it's supposed to be like a throwback. There's not really nostalgia because I wasn't, I wasn't Here around when Here when it go. came out. <laughs> but but like as a kid, you know this this was still a lingering kind of thing you'd hear oh, on the radio or on TV 80, or whatever. Kid, sure. Yeah, yeah. So so there's a little bit of the nostalgia. I just thought it was fun. Uh, you know, I think she, she's got a great voice. I mean, Hot Stuff is is a huge hit. Um, 
Uh, I, but I agree. I think it would have been nice to hear her do something that was, uh, you know, less of that kind of sound just to, yeah. I think it would have a little more staying power without having to be like such a retro throwback kind of, kind of thing. Uh, but, I, but I thought it was fun. You know, I, 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 uh, I don't think that it's going to go in my rotation, but I don't really listen. I have nothing against disco really, but I don't, I just don't listen. It's not usually one of my, one of my, uh, go to things, but I, I liked it. It was like the kind of, it was kind of like cheesy disco, but it, it wasn't annoying like some of the like real overly, you know, the kind of stuff I'm talking about where it's like that, that sound, but to the point where it's, it's too much. Four stuff. Yeah. It's like yeah. too much. Well, I'm sure they, like they took the coolness out of like disco was cool at some point, And then it just became too. I don't think it was ever cool. There's oh, no, no it, it went, it went and, and this was, she was also huge in the gay community. Yeah. Well, there's that too. But uh, cocaine made people think <laughs> things were a little better than that. <laughs> yeah, cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. Disco brought to you by cocaine. <laughs> uh, but I, some disco is cool. You know, you got like a, a good bass player. Or what, like, and then it just kind of became... Nile Rodgers. And she Nile Rogers. Not disco. Yep. I mean, he's he might have played on some disco tracks, but that guy's a one man situation. Like he's not disc. He's not disco. I mean, mm -hmm. Dick Bowie. would you say Chic is disco? Good times is that? That's a disco song. Maybe he's done some disco songs, but he's not disco. Well, he no. He well, he, listen, he's he's everything. But yeah. but but when but when uh, a lot. yeah, he's great. Like an he, hour he, now. He's, when Dolly Parton really? no. did three songs. Oh, was that, oh, that was a Dolly Parton. <laughs> oh, Park. that was the show. <laughs> it wow. always goes back to this I concert. Was, I, I love how much this concert comes up on the show. <laughs> three songs. <laughs> Were they the, the three you wanted? Was it nine to five? Was it uh, I yeah, always it was love nine you? To five. Uh, it was always love you, and it wasn't Jolene. It was Jolene. Uh, oh, not Jolene. No, it was yeah. something else. I forget what it was. At least goes down. To, it was two songs. It was nine to five, and I always love you. It was two songs. It wasn't even three. It was two songs. Wow. I'm sorry. Wow. Two songs. Come on, dude. Elvis, and even in the most wasted days of his life, hooked up on fucking painkillers and God knows what, would play a full concert. Dolly, like you know, probably, probably who knows? Probably had COVID. I mean, God knows what was happening. We didn't know what that was yet. But. Uh, <laughs> Two songs? Come on, Jeff. Come on. You, you would you would play more than five minutes if you were, you know, at a gig and people wanted to see you, right? I mean, of course. Uh, five minutes is, is nothing. <laughs> Sorry. We only had five minutes worth of material. I did five minutes. <laughs> it's one of the it's one of the most I just I can't get over it. I'll never get over it. Hopefully I'll meet her one day and be like, yo, dude, what happened in L what happened right. in New York? <laughs> 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 what did she and she's the sweetest thing in the world who never there's nobody that says i hate dolly barton that's never come out of anybody's mouth but no. i'm borderline because i, <laughs> was, uh, I have maybe, more of her albums and everything but maybe she had a reason maybe she was sick or uh, maybe she's on a heat period. exhaustion you don't have your period at a certain point in your life jeff you know that i don't um, know how long ago this concert did. was Do you know anything <laughs> about the humans and women? Yeah, but when was this concert was it was it two years ago was it 20 years ago or in Dolly Parton's case, 40 years ago. You. It was like two years ago, literally. Two years. It was like three I didn't years before, right before COVID. Oh, okay. Didn't I, it was like yeah. Probably 219. So, her having a period, that would have been pretty huge. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the F word, you talk about periods, you know, we're, we're going to have to have another meeting with Jeff. <laughs> right. We got to get something going on this show. We're, we need some end. Fine. We don't need, we don't need the, the period, but anyway, <gasps> speaking of period music, um, <laughs> so Donna Summer, she's, she's good. If you like that kind of sound. And, and I think yeah. she's great. I mean, Very I talented. Great pick, Jeff. I just, Very I'm talented. glad you picked it. Cause it's like, you know, all over the place. Because um, and I I obviously most of my music is dated, but I don't want it to sound dated. That's the difference. And I feel like sometimes I just want you know, and like the pick that I have today, um, you know, Etta James. Uh, this oh is yeah, very old. got it on and, vinyl. Yeah, I found I ran out and got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Etta James is somebody I found on the turntable in a record store, and you know, because I you know, it's like almost impossible to know 
all the good music. Like you, you think you do, you know, like you'll, you'll get, it's funny. You'll get locked in on somebody be like, I know who Nina Simone is, or I know who this person is. Mm-hmm. I know who Miles Davis is. And I like, you'll know, like maybe, you know, 10 good people, but then there's so many other people that you, that you're just missing because you just don't have, the catalog in your head or you don't have you're not around like that's what jeff keeps saying it's like that is what's great about the show it's like we we we're we're filling our heads you know full of music that we wouldn't have ever heard of and so and even people that are famous or people that are just part of the top 10 of whatever or people you miss just because you know Mm -hmm. other people get the credit you know Eddie james is somebody that you know we're going to talk about nina simone we'll talk about aretha franklin you know we'll talk about dinah washington we'll talk about billy holiday but a lot of people you know don't really bring up Etta James. And uh, I remember I heard At Last was playing on the turntable and I was like, God, what a song. And it was like, sometimes it's a song that, that just, just takes you in and you're just like, you know, this is, this is, uh, this, uh, At Last has been played on this album, like on repeat over and over. I think, it, I don't, I think the groove is almost done. And the, the <laughs> wore it I out. just love the way it sounds. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot of research. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, this is, uh, November 1960. Uh, this album was out. 60. Um, she was kind of a, a prodigy, uh, age of five. She had a, a troubled past. She's a foster kid and stuff. And then, and she got in the gospel choir and uh, just kind of a, a gospel standout. And everybody was like, oh, my God, this girl could sing. They put her on the radio at like the uh, age of 12 and stuff like that. And then she started working with Leonard Chess, who uh, Chess Records uh, produced some of the, you know, the greatest, you know, jazz musicians and people that came out. And, uh, yeah, this, you know, this album um, is it's just a, I think a perfect jazz album. Um, I don't think there's a bad song on here. Um, this is the kind of music that just kind of dig, digs to your soul, you know. And uh, this is uh, this is a fantastic. Uh, At last is probably obviously one of the best songs, but uh, you know, uh, stormy weather is great. Uh, Sunday kind of love. Yep. I love that song. I think that's such a just a great song. This is just you know if you want to advance your kind of musicology, I think uh, bringing a, a little Eddie James into your collection will do that. And so yeah, this is uh, this is one of my favorite jazz albums, and I, I don't know jazz and blues. I put her in both, you know. So yeah, she's uh, she's great, and uh, just curious what you guys think about uh, Eddie James at last. Uh, Jeff, how would you feel about this album? Uh, it, it's it's a great album. Um, it's very funny. I was at the uh, comic strip on Monday, and then afterwards, you know, we all go out to Brady's across the street, and you know, I'm at the bar. I'm, I'm getting a couple of drinks for for everybody, and all of a sudden, at last, came on. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, and I'm like, oh shit, I know this. I was just <laughs> listening to this today, and I'm like, Eddie James. Yeah, and the yeah. guy like it's like yeah, I'm like yeah, yeah. you get to be that guy, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that, and so that's the whole reason why you do this show. So <laughs> so you have that moment in a bar, okay, oh, yeah. and imp- and impress people who will never remember you. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, stormy. You're, you're right. Um, the song there's a couple of like songs that you know with fast up tempo songs that she does great too. And Adam, maybe you know this better than I do, but. She has a song called I Just Want to Make Love to You. And was that covered by some rock bands? Because I, I think it was. Oh, yeah. 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 But like, I, I, something like hard, hard stuff. But I mean, listen, this is an album you, you throw on and you just leave it. it and there's no need to, you know, you, you, you know, the only bad thing is if it's on record, you got to change the side. If yeah, you, you got to flip it over. Right? That's what I like about vinyl. You take a break. You like, talk yeah, to, I mean, you know, interrupt the music. But if you're playing this over Spotify, if you're playing this on, you know, through your phone and you have it on when you're doing stuff, I mean, it's it's a great album. I mean, she, the album I was going to consider doing was Ella Fitzgerald. And I kind of put Etta James and Etta, Ella Fitzgerald in the same category. I mean, that beautiful, strong, distinctive voice you know she can do jazz but she can do so much more i i love it it's a crying shame was another song that really kind of like i liked a lot but i but the songs that you met stormy weather is a great, great song I, I don't know if you ever heard jeff lynn's version of it uh he did it on his solo album um and sunday kind of love i always thought that was an original four seasons song i didn't know they were covering this nice. so there were songs that you, you recognize, but yeah, she she's great. And this is a really, this is a really strong guy. I mean, you're really not going on a limb here, Dustin, by going, I'm going to try Eddie James. It's like saying, I'm a Yankee fan. Of course, they're good. Yeah. 
This is the yeah, Yankees of, of female music. Tiger, because I don't think people are bringing up Etta James like that. It's not yeah. like, you know, it's not like Aretha Franklin. Like, it's, she's definitely, it's, she's not known name wise like everybody else, you know? Well, she's a little later than, you know, right? She was before Aretha Franklin. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, uh, she lived into her 70s. She had a very troubled past, much like Billie Holiday. She was hooked on heroin and, you know, she had some problems like that and stuff. But, uh, yeah, so she, you know, I, I think she kind of played later, you know, but it didn't. Was she know. on TV? Yeah, she she probably did. I, I don't have all that with me, but yeah, she, I'm sure she did some. She had some notoriety. I mean, she won. Um, well, she was like number 12. This song, when this song, when this album came out, it was like 12 on the charts. And so she was getting popularity, but it's not, you know, it wasn't like a, it's just, it's just not somebody you think of all the time. You think of, you know. Uh, you know, Diana Ross and there are certain people you just don't think Etta James really. But that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Like you know, Diana Ross, Aretha Franklin, Dion Warwick. You know, 60s, 70s when there was like the Mike Douglas show and all these sh shows that you know that people would go on. I think she kind of like missed th that that era, so she wouldn't be as exposed. You know. Yeah, she won it. She uh, she got a uh, Grammy Award nomination in '73, but. Uh, and then mm. 2006 uh, album all the way was like her, I think her last album, and uh, I think it did pretty well. So, and she died in 2006, but uh, she lived in her 70s. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, it's you know, it's it's good stuff. I just, I, I just, you know, it's not. I, I this, I feel like this is perfect for vinyl. I think so. Oh yeah. Albums. You know, it's oh like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like you know, last week, uh, you know, Anthony had the kind of blue Miles Davis. Like, there's certain albums that are just perfect, you know, for your vinyl. You just have to have it. Yeah, some stuff you put on there, and I'm like, why did I buy this on on vinyl? You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> stuff here, just like. But uh, uh, let's see, Anthony. Yeah, I I I uh, I would get this on vinyl. I, I like you're saying. I think it's perfect. Uh, she's got an amazing voice. This is. I mean, all the way through, I think it's good. I think she's one of these artists. If you have something bad to say, you're just wrong. <laughs> it's, you, it's that's why I chose that. I didn't want any, yeah. I didn't want any hate today. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's 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 not even an opinion. I mean, yeah. she's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's really good stuff. Uh, Adam. So, yeah. So, uh, oh, so first off, the song "I Just Want to Make Love to You" uh, was originally recorded by Muddy Waters, and the rock version is Fog Hat. That's it. I knew oh, it. Fog I knew hat. it. I, wow. Yeah. I, I, I could, I could, I, I could hear, hear that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Right. Um, yeah, that's, that's so good. Yeah. So with Etta James, I I knew of her. I never listened to any of her albums before. So um, I I really enjoyed this one. Um, you know, just as everyone else has said, this is an album that immediately i thought this is perfect for vinyl i got to go out and buy this um and uh yeah i mean there's um uh i think sunday kind of love is probably my favorite song on this album so good yeah and also with a lot of jazz out you know sometimes there's you know little trios and stuff i mean she had like a full orchestra on a lot of these songs yeah so it's just i very, love that you know rich you know sound and yeah very big very big but uh cool, man all right so get you some meta jones guys good stuff yep. good stuff all right adam what'd you bring us all right so i decided to go with an album that was more recent um 2021's debut for a uh, british singer songwriter celeste uh not your muse and um i went into this com pretty much completely blind um all i did was i i had read an article that um she's a uh, She's a very hyped artist in the UK. Uh, this album, I think, debuted at number one. It was the first. Um, it was the first debut album from a female artist that debuted at number one in in, in years. And um, and the only thing I the only other thing I knew going into this was that she was compared to Amy Winehouse, Nina Simone, Billie Holiday. Um, I think Ella Fitzgerald also. And I was like, well, this sounds this sounds fascinating. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. Um, they were also calling her a once in a generation talent. And, um, you know, the first, uh, I, I threw this on the first couple songs were a bit, a bit mellow. And I, I was kind of rethinking my pick a bit. Um, so that was ideal woman and strange. I think it picked the album picks up with, uh, tonight, tonight and stop this flame, which, uh, I, I mean, I, so another artist she got compared to is an artist I really hate, which is Adele and, um, uh... stop this flame <laughs> kind of reminded me of an Adele song, but, um, <laughs> but uh outside of that i mean this is a um 
this is an album I, th- I think with uh, the songs like Not Your Muse, Beloved, Love Is Back, Love Is Back, which which very much sounds like an Amy Winehouse song. Um, I thought uh, this album started to grow on me and um, I'm still kind of mixed about really how I feel about the album, but um, it, it's kind of a modern soul album, which I guess encompasses uh, this. She has a sultry singing voice. There's a bit of jazz in there. There's, um, you know, there's this, this kind of retro sound, but also you do have some electronics in, in some of these, there's like a, this, this, bit of dream pop in there. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a, f- a fascinating album. I think that she definitely, she has a powerful voice. I think she's going to have a lot of potential. Um, you know, it, it's, um, and this is an album that uh, kind of spans. She, I, I know that some of the things I was reading about her says that she saw this as a uh, album of empowerment and self-assuredness. And there's, um, you know, you have your, your songs of loss on there, but you have your songs of hope too. Um, so yeah, I was wondering what you guys thought of it. Yeah, I thought it was beautiful. I love this album. I loved every song on it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely broody and just what I expect from you. And yep. <laughs> <laughs> it is very, it is very broody. Right. You're just drawn to it. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was drawn to it from the beginning. Um, uh, it's just like ideal woman and uh, strange really draw you in. Uh, it's very slow, uh, soulful and painful. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's it kind of has you know Kate Bush is getting a lot of you know plays. Oh right. Oh yeah. Kate Bush feel to it, um, with also some Billie Holiday and some Etta Jane. You know, there's a lot going on there with her voice. Very 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 talented. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I uh, you know what was the song? Uh, Tell me something or oh, I don't know. I don't know. Kind of picks up a little bit. Kind of yeah. Bad, Kate Bush feel. Um, but uh, yeah, it was good, man. It's it's definitely um, something that. Uh, you know, you'd put on right after Ed James. It's like, and that's what's cool because I feel like it, it's just a compliment where you just take like something that's kind of the OG and then take something that's kind of, you know, a little more doing newer things and kind of taking a different take on it. And, uh, but I liked it a lot. I thought it was beautiful, beautiful voice and uh, a lot of range. I think she could do a lot of cool stuff, but yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was great and dark and just right up my alley. It was good stuff. Uh, Anthony, I, I assume you like this. Seems like it was. I, I did yeah. like it. I, I had not heard of her before, yeah. um, but, you know, s- similar kind of feelings. I, I like that it's a sort of retro sound, but with a modern twist. Um, her voice is great. And, uh, you know, I could hear the Amy Winehouse and mm-hmm. that kind of, that kind of thing. Um, I liked that. This is something that I would, uh, I, I would listen to again. You know, I, I want to listen to it more. I want to kind Very of sexy too. get to know it oh, more. Yeah. yeah. It is sexy. Yeah. I had my pants off the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I, I the, liked it. That was great. Yeah. There's like that kind of a it's smoky perfect. lounge yeah. feel yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. And, and I know she even said in one of her interviews that it was, uh, that there was a noirish um, kind of mood that she was oh, going for. Yeah. The junkies, but, which we like oh, yeah. a little bit that. But yeah. th- this is like, you know, when you're talking about, you go into a record store and you hear something or whatever. And this reminded me of like, um, I don't know, but maybe it was last week. I had a record by uh, Lady Ray. It was a similar kind of sounding yeah. artist, the same kind of throwback with the modern twist. And I was in a coffee shop and they were playing it on, there was a coffee shop that plays vinyl. And uh, and it was one of the See, that was playing, and I shazammed it, and I was like, "Oh, I gotta check it." Out. And, and Amber, my my wife, she really liked it, and she, she, so we bought it on uh, we bought it on vinyl. So it remind me it reminded me of that a lot. It's the same kind of vibe. Like this is something you'd hear at a record store and be like, "Man, this is cool." Yeah, yeah that's why you moved to L.A., Anthony. We have coffee shops <laughs> with that play vinyl. And they play vinyl, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're just playing their CD on a loop. Um, yeah, Jeff. Um, okay, so I, I put it on and two, <laughs> <laughs> did he get it in early enough? Did he okay. get it in early? He, he, he got in a little late, but lot, lot, <laughs> much better than you, Anthony. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I, I'm listening to this, and the first two songs, I'm about to text them. I'm like, oh what the God. fuck, Adam? Yeah. Okay. Really? I, I really I'm like I I don't want to hear this shit. It remind wow. me of like you know, it remind me of a, a Billie Eilish and depressing and brooding. And I was not in I was not feeling it. Then tonight, tonight comes on, I'm like, this is good. And then 
I love. And if you're an A and R guy, how do you not make "Stop This Flame" the first single off that this? That was good. Okay, yeah, because I, and this if radio meant anything anymore, this would be a monster hit. Yeah, uh, it's it, it. This song is a great, great song. When I'm when I listen to it, and then I'm like, hold up, and then I got to go back and listen to it again right away because I liked it that much. To me, this was easily the standout song on this album. Yeah, it's very jazzy um, too. That song. It was cool. It was a cool song. Uh, yeah, she clearly, clearly had this talent. Uh, she, you know, I definitely like you guys said it. You know, Amy Winehouse was was what came to mind. I, you know, I go right to Back to Black. Um, mm-hmm. And just with albums like this, you know, are a little inconsistent. You know, as you know, as far as the vibe is concerned. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of like, you know, the, the slow self-loathing type of stuff. Although I, I like Marcy, The Cure and The Smith. OK, yeah. but but you like you, it when men do it. Right. I like it when men do it. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe that's what maybe that's what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was this was a, a very good album uh, overall. Uh, she, she, you know, I'd like I would love to hear what the next album is going to be like. And, uh, you know, I would like to hear this on the radio. I, I haven't yeah. heard this on the radio anywhere. And, and again, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't, we wouldn't have heard this. And if it wasn't for Anthony, yeah. I would have never heard X-ray specs. So I thought these were two. And then, you know, Dustin with a nice uh, classic. So yeah, we did well t- this week, guys. <laughs> Jeff's, Jeff's uh, feedback was a roller coaster ride. Yeah. That's what he I do, was, Anthony. He hated oh, it. He loved it. I, I, bring, I bring you on a journey. Stay with me. Stay with me. That's why he's on the show. I'm going to stir your pot. So it's just, I know what I'm doing. I'm, doing yeah. it. I'm good at booking people. All right, everybody. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, please also Dustin Vinyl. Um, actually, we get a little traction with the uh, Dustin's YouTube. We're doing pretty good. We could use some more love on that. So please uh, subscribe Dustin's Vinyl on YouTube and check us out on Spotify and all the other uh, podcast platforms. All right, everybody. Woo, buy Vinyl. Support the record stores. Coffee shops. I got this. Coffee shops (laughs) that play vinyl. Right. All right. Yay. That was a short riff to anything. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't know. I, 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 oh, oh, he's already gone. Too, it's gone. Damn, he's already listening. Well, we're still on, uh, still on Twitch, so I'll play yeah, the riff. Still on. Yeah.